Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lecture 2.8, and um, uh, we're going to be looking at the design of a tiled kernel for arbitrary matrix dimensions for matrix multiplication. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn how to write a tiled matrix multiplication kernel for arbitrary matrix dimensions. And we're going to show you the code that you need to write in order to be able to load tiles that can exceed the matrix boundaries. And um, uh, we're going to show a uh, fairly simple method that can uh, simplify the control flow in the computation that uses tile data. And we'll continue to reason about the functionality and performance trade-offs. So with all the cases that we analyzed in the previous lecture, now we're ready to look at a simple solution to be, uh, to be able to handle all those cases. So uh, here the, in the solution we uh, will have is to, to have every thread when it loads a uh, input element in a tile to check whether it's going to be loading from a valid range, uh, index range or not. So if it is in the valid range, go ahead and load the input element. Otherwise, uh, do not load, but just assign a zero into the element. In fact, for floating point, it's 0, 0.0. The rationale is that whenever we have a zero value, and, uh, when we do the multiplication and accumulate for the dot product, that zero value is going to, uh, to result in a zero product, and which will not affect the accumulated dot product value. So uh, we would uh, be able to address the concern where some of the data are invalid uh, garbage data. As long as all those data elements are zeros, then uh, we will be able to avoid uh, polluting any of the elements in the C out output. So here we show a simple case, uh, a, a simple case for uh, phase one use of zero zero. So uh, recall that uh, we have uh, two invalid elements of B and two invalid elements of A. But here, if as long as we test uh, for every thread to test whether uh, it's loading a uh, element in the valid range or not, then we will end up uh, assigning zeros to all these four locations and uh, rather than loading garbage value. So in this case, when we do the iteration one, we're going to actually uh, produce zero value products and accumulate zero into the final dot uh, value, which does not change the dot product value. Therefore, we preserve the correctness of the dot product. So uh, and in order to avoid uh, writing into an incorrect C element position or even trigger a memory protection error, at the end of the, uh, the, the calculation, we will need to be able to prevent some of the threads from writing into C. However, as long as we have um, the, uh, the values that are uh, zero, either appropriate values or zeros in the tiles, we can allow all these threads to perform the calculation and accumulate into their private C values. As long as we do not allow them to write into the final C uh, array, then uh, we are okay. And this way, we allow some of these threads that are not calculating valid C elements to still participate in the loading of tiles. So this addresses uh, the, uh, the second major case that we uh, analyzed in the, uh, in the previous lecture. So now we're ready to, uh, to, to show the various parts of the kernel. So um, here we first focus on the loading of the uh, tile elements. So uh, for loading a tile, we show a picture where uh, uh, all these thread blocks are going to be progressing from left to right. And um, uh, there are two cases where we can, uh, we can potentially need to deal with uh, invalid uh, A elements. The first case is that um, we may be uh, having most of the tiles in the valid range of A except for the very end. So uh, in this case, uh, we need to make sure that uh, all the uh, threads 
that are uh, assigned to load the, this n tile to assign zero into the uh, into the uh, uh, shared memory. The other case is that if a tile is actually at the lower boundary of the um, the matrix, then we will can have a situation where uh, all the way from the beginning to the end, some of the threat, uh, threads will be uh, loading invalid elements all the way. So we also need to make sure that uh, these, uh, these things are handled correctly. So we need to uh, test whether the Y index and the X index that is being used by every thread are both within the valid range. As long as both the Y index and X index are in the uh, valid range, then the thread will go ahead and load the element from A. Otherwise, in, if either is outside the range, the thread should just assign a zero into the shared memory location. So um, here is just a quick review of the uh, index that we calculate for loading that A tile element. The Y index is row, and the X index is T times tile width plus thread index dot X. So uh, even though we need to linearize the, uh, the index because A is dynamically allocated, conceptually, we have a good separation of the Y index and the X index. So this makes the testing uh, very simple. We just need to make sure that the Y index, which is rho, is less than M. M is the, the Y dimensional in, uh, the Y dimension of the A matrix. And we also need to make sure that the X index is within range, which means that we test whether T times tile width plus TX is less than uh, M, uh, less than N. So uh, if true, then we load the A element. If not true, we load zero into the uh, shared memory location. We have a fairly simple situation for B. And um, B goes, uh, the B stri uh, strip goes from top to bottom. So we have a similar situation where uh, most of the tiles are going to be totally within the valid range until the very end, where we need to test whether uh, we hit the end in the Y dimension. On the other hand, we also have a situation where uh, one of the tiles, uh, one of the strips is going to be at the right boundary of well, B. So we also need to make sure that uh, all the threads always test whether uh, the, uh, the, the X index is within the range. And um, we only load the elements when both Y and X indices are within valid range. So uh, you can go through the calculation here. It's exactly the same as A, except that um, the expressions for the Y index and X index are different for B. So at this point, I'd like to uh, begin to have you to reason a little bit about the performance uh, considerations. So let's go back to the loading of A here. Even though we're going to have the if then else for all the threads in the kernel, uh, that execute the kernel, for most of the threads, as long as all the the entire tile is within the valid range, then uh, the entire thread block is going to be loading value from A. So there's not going to be any control divergence. And as we mentioned in the previous lecture, this allow, even though there is a control a flow in, a statement in the kernel, the performance effect is going to be minimal. And for the thread block that is going to be uh, accessing the bottom strip, we're going to have at most one control divergent warp within the thread block because um, the, all, the, uh, all the rows are going to be either inside or outside the, um, the valid range except for the orange one. So for all those rows, uh, all those um, uh, blocks that are either inside or outside the, um, the, the green uh, range for, uh, for the tiles, there's going to be no control divergence for the warps that are totally within 
and there's no control divergence for warps that are totally outside. And there's only potentially one control divergence where a row may be loading one row inside and one row outside. So this um, goes back to the row major layout of a two-dimensional thread block. And uh, we're going to have all the conse uh, consecutive threads in the X dimension to be in the same warp. So that's why um, we're going to see very little control divergence even within the thread blocks that cross the lower boundary. The orange blocks are, uh, are, are going to have more control divergence because now we, we're going to have uh, threads that are um, consecutive in the horizontal direction here, but some of the threads will be inside and some of the threads will be loading elements from outside. So we're going to have a boundary here where in every warp, we're going to have a different control decision depending on whether the thread is loading an inside element or outside element. So we're going to see control divergence in every warp when, uh, in, in the thread block when handling these orange blocks. However, in a large enough matrix, the number of orange tiles will be much smaller than the, uh, the, uh, the tiles that are totally within the, um, the matrix value range. Therefore, the performance e effect of uh, control divergence for all the thread blocks involved should be fairly small. All these things are only triggered in the, uh, when these thread blocks finish handling all the inside the tiles and when they fin uh, process the very last tile of the, uh, of the data. For B, it's a little bit different because um, one of the thread blocks uh, is going to be uh, traveling down at the edge of the matrix. So as we explained in the previous slide, um, all the warps in, th in this block, uh, thread, uh, all the warps in, in the thread block will always have control divergence all the way from top to bottom. So the, um, the, the effect of control divergence is going to be a little bit more than the A case. However, most of the thread uh, uh, tiles are still going to be within the, uh, the valid range for, lar for sufficiently large matrices. So for large matrices, and we, even for the B case, we're going to, we expect to have fairly small uh, effect from control divergence. So now we're ready to take a look at the kernel code. Now that you have everything nailed conceptually, um, writing the kernel code should be fairly simple. First of all, when we run, uh, for the for loop that iterates through all the tiles, now we need to make sure that um, there are enough iteration to cover all the uh, elements in each, uh, in the horizontal direction of A and vertical direction of B. So we are, we, now we need to use a ceiling function because N is no longer guaranteed to be a tile, uh, multiple of the tile width. And uh, this uh, uh, makes sure that uh, we always have uh, more than enough uh, threads or enough tiles to be uh, to be able to cover all the uh, elements in the in that uh, direction. And here we show the if then else statement for loading the var uh, element A, and we have the if then else for loading the var uh, element B. So now that you have un understood all the design considerations and the conceptual background for this in this calculation and the test condition, the code, it should be extremely clear to you at this point. Once we finish loading, we still need to have the sync thread. And so um, in this picture, we show the original lines from the tiled kernel uh, that we showed in uh, lecture 2.6. And then we showed all the extra lines that we need to have or changes that we need to make from that kernel, and also we, I marked the change to the for loop in red so that you see all the uh, differences of this kernel compared to the simple uh, matrix, tiled matrix multiplication kernel that assumes that M, N, and K were multiples of the tile width. As we mentioned before, 
because we assign zeros into the uh, shared memory locations that correspond to invalid uh, A and B elements, we can actually allow all the threads to uh, to just access all the way through their uh, if uh, for loop and, um, uh, and expect them to all generate correct results. So for the threads that can step outside, uh, because the outside is actually all zero values, they are going to produce the correct results. And for the threads that calculate invalid C elements, as long as they keep accumulating into their private C value, nothing, no harm is going to be done. And we do the uh, sync thread after we finish the calculation step, and then we go back and uh, uh, iterate to the next tile until we're done with all the tiles. When we come back, come out, out of the, uh, the tile loop, then uh, we know that we're done with all the C elements. So here, we need to test whether ro the uh, row index and column index are within the valid Y dimension and X dimension. So uh, as long as they're both within the valid range, then we can go ahead and write C uh, element. It should be C, not P. There is a typo here. So some very uh, important points. For each thread, the conditions are different for loading A element, for loading B element, and for storing C elements. So you need to um, you know, make sure that you, you uh, go and check for each condition and make sure that you have implemented each condition correctly. And the effect of the control divergence should be very small, as we mentioned in the slide where we analyzed all the, con uh, all the index and checking um, condition. So at this point, you are ready for the uh, tiled matrix multiplication uh, lab, and you should be able to implement the entire kernel. And there's one word of caution. Um, do not try to copy the code from the slides. The slides are really designed to uh, illustrate what you need to do. So when we produce these slides, we can easily introduce typos and so on into the code. So uh, you really should be using these slides as your conceptual foundation, and but you should really write the code from scratch. And um, uh, please do not try to copy the code into your lab assignment. And um, uh, this completes all the lectures for week two. And uh, now you have a very solid foundation for writing massively parallel memory efficient code. And uh, in the next several weeks, we're going to build on this foundation and begin to teach you even more uh, patterns for solving real world problems and also how you can reason more about the performance and functionality trade-offs along the way. Thank you.